Red Spark, what is your opinion on Apple forcing artists to do Atmos mixes if they want to be playlisted? You are invested into Atmos and are going to do well with it, but I think you also have the indie artist perspective to balance your point of view. I don't like anybody forcing anything on anybody. That, <laughs> that is in life. Unfortunately, the music business is a business. We all know this, right? And just like before stereo, there was mono, there's only so much you can do. I don't think it's right to force anything, um, especially, you know, something like this, which is, I wanna say an accessory to music and it's not essential. Although I think artists are looking at this uh, the wrong way. They're looking at the wrong way. I understand why they're looking at the wrong way. They're looking at the wrong way because they say, oh, great. Now I have to spend more money to get my music out because I need Atmos. Otherwise I can't post new music to Apple and probably to, to all the other streaming uh, services if things go up as planned. And this is the artist's point of view. The other point of view is like the mix engineers or the artist that does everything himself. And he goes like, oh, great. I just barely made it to learn stereo. Now, you know, I have <laughs> to learn Atmos, which it's really hard and it requires a, a pretty substantial uh, investment in, you know, having the system and everything between software, hardware, speakers, everything, switcher is very expensive. Unfortunately, let me reiterate, I'm not a fan of anybody forcing anything to anybody, but this is, should be seen from artists and engineers as a, an opportunity and not something negative. First of all, because as you probably know, if you ask me this question, if you say the things that you say, I, I, I do Atmos, I do Atmos at Ikari Studio, and it's an amazing studio, I'm very lucky. And uh, we presented Bella's new single at NAMM. Um, and I, when, when Atmos is done right, it's a whole different ball game, man. I was the number one skeptic for Atmos until I went through, you know, the hoops of learning it, um, getting experience on it and done things with it. And then when you realize the potential, it's so freaking cool. Is everything that we struggle to do in stereo, you know, how many videos I have on placing things in 3D and front to back and all that. Well, in Atmos, you can actually do it and, it's, and then some more. So the format itself, it's, it's amazing. And the reason because they are like that, it's because labels for the most part, they don't really care. They just want the product out and they don't give the engineers enough time to learn it, to do a proper mix. They don't want to pay enough. And you know, many of the mixes out there is just getting stamps, not even single tracks and just putting everything on every speakers and stuff like that. But anyway, I digress. The artists should see Atmos as a new opportunity to sell something else to their fans other than the stereo mix. For example, the video, remember it was the same. Oh my God, the video killed the radio, right? It will kill music. No, it's an added value to the music. Today would be unthinkable to do, you know, music without videos. And this is not the same, but you give your audience a different experience, a different way to experience your music. Again, I don't like it that it's, they are forcing it, but they, that's, that's the business, you know, the business that includes the, the licensing and the, the special audio for Apple and their special headphones and stuff. But Atmos is here to stay because the consumer product of Atmos are already available for like $90 or free. If you buy a new car, it's gonna have Atmos in it. Mercedes has it, Tesla has it, Porsche has it. Next is gonna be GM and Ford. Your next TV is gonna have Atmos. Your next, you buy two, three Alexa little speakers, you're gonna be able to put it in Atmos setup because that's why Atmos is, is successful because it's scalable. The file that we print contains all the information that when you play it through a system that is not 
the big Hollywood studios with 24 speakers, the file already knows what to do. If you have two speakers, binaural, will turn it in, into binaural. If you have a smaller setup, it will down mix it automatically. So that's, it's scalable. Problem is the people who, and I don't wanna offend anybody, who don't have paying fans and they want to put music out and now they have to spend more because they're not making money with their music. And as things are for right now, you can put out stereo stuff for cheap, even though they're not probably sounding that great. With Atmos, that's gone because you need, you know, everything. But I said it in other videos, if you don't invest in yourself as an artist and you don't value your art and your music, how do you expect other people to pay for it if you're not even willing to invest you know, a little bit on your own art. And that goes for every business. I think the music industry is the only business, so to speak, where people are kind of, uh, they, I'm amazing. So I'm just gonna put my amazing art out for like, I don't wanna spend anything. And you guys needs to buy all my stuff. You know, that's, <laughs> that's really not a good starting point. But yeah, I'm not a fan of anybody forcing anything. If you guys have questions for the Q&A, leave them in the comments down below. Consider using the super thanks and support the channel. Click the join button and access the exclusive members only mix and mastering courses. Many more are coming in the next weeks. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, comment down below. See you next time. Play the role of an angel pretty well.